will now discuss the chemical nature of the enzymes. We know that most of the enzymes are proteins and the reason why we are calling or using the term most of the enzymes because there are few like ribozymes where the ribosome is also associated with it. So most of enzymes are tertiary proteins. They are specific and tertiary proteins. Some enzymes, they work without anything associated with the protein. So on the basis of that, we can classify them into two categories. One category, simple enzymes. Simple enzymes are when the protein is acting as enzyme without any non-protein part associated with it. Such enzymes are known as simple enzymes. We can take example like pepsin, trypsin, etc. These are the enzymes which do not need anything to come and bind with that protein part. That protein part which is a tertiary protein straight away acts as enzyme. Many a times in most of the cases there is a protein part but there has to be something non-protein attached to that protein so that the protein becomes functional as enzyme. So the second category of enzyme is known as conjugated enzymes. They are called conjugated enzymes. Now in this case there is a protein part and a non-protein part. The protein part is known as EPO enzyme. But this EPO enzyme on its own is non-functional. It becomes functional only when this non-protein part comes and binds with it. So this non-protein part is known as cofactor. And now after these two things have combined, what we get is a functional enzyme which is known as holoenzyme. So holoenzyme, this is the functional enzyme. So the basic difference between the two types of enzymes is that here there is protein and the protein itself is working as enzyme. Whereas in the second category, the protein that is the EPO enzyme can become functional only when a non-protein part which we call cofactor comes and binds with it. So this is non-functional protein, something comes and binds with it and we get a functional enzyme which we call the holoenzyme. We classify these cofactors into again two categories. These cofactors can be organic substances, non-protein, organic, non-protein substances or they can be inorganic metallic ions, metallic ions. Organic substances, they can again be divided into two categories on the basis of when are they attached to the enzymes and can they be separated. If this organic non-protein part which we call cofactor is organic but it can be easily separated from the EPO enzyme. Easily separated. Then we use the term coenzyme. Then that organic substance will be termed as coenzyme. And if it cannot be separated, then we call it prosthetic group. And if those are inorganic metallic ions, the term which we normally use for this are, is activators. So what can be attached to an EPO enzyme? Any non-protein part. Any non-protein part, the term which is given to that is cofactor. 
Cofactor can be organic also, inorganic also. If it is organic, then we have to see, can be separated easily from that epoenzyme or not? If it can be separated, then coenzyme. If it is a permanent part attached to this epoenzyme, then we call it prosthetic group. And if it is some kind of a metallic ion, then that would be the activator. So this is how the chemical nature of the enzymes is uh, classified or uh, explained. Here we will also talk about the types of enzymes on the basis of their site. So where do enzymes work? Site of enzyme action. If the enzyme is working inside the cell, inside the cell, then such enzymes are known as endogenous enzymes or they are also known as intracellular enzymes. Whereas if the enzymes work outside the cell, that means secreted by the cell, but they work outside the cell. So second spay or site is outside the cell. Then they are known as exogenous enzymes or extracellular enzymes. Our digestive enzymes which are secreted by various cells, they act on food in the lumen of elementary canal. And when they are working in the lumen of the elementary canal, that means they are working outside the cell in that cavity. So those are the extracellular. But in many cases like unicellular organisms, complete digestion is going to take place inside the cell. Then that would be intracellular. So this classification is on the basis of the site where these enzymes work. So we have seen the chemical composition or chemical nature of the enzymes also and the classification based on the site where these enzymes